Hello, welcome to Board Game Madness. I'm Mike Ganade, and today's matchup we have the number seven seed, Paladins of the West Kingdom, against the number 26 seed, Dinosaur Island Roar and Wright. Now, as always in this tournament of head to head games, I like to start out by giving you a quick overview of each game. So, we'll start with Paladins of the West Kingdom. This is one of the crunchiest, longest Euro games that I sort of have in my collection, and it combines worker placement and engine building and the theme is you know your your paladins in this west kingdom universe similar to architects of the west kingdom and you are defeating enemies building up different workers in, on your board and sort of engine building and just trying to score the most points uh, in sort of standard euro fashion uh, it's a really in-depth game but has a lot of cool mechanisms and gives you a lot of control, which I like. Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, on the other hand, is a more in-depth Roll and Write game than most other Roll and Write games. It's a little crunchier than most in that ways. Uh, in that way, uh, it says it plays in 30 to 45 minutes. I think with more players, it plays a little bit longer than that. I've never finished a game in 30 minutes, even at two player. I think this is more like a 45 minute to an hour game. Whereas, you know, Paladin, just to go back to this, this is like a 60 plus 90, 120 minute game for sure. It says 90 to 120 minutes, so that's that's pretty accurate. It's definitely a meatier game. Uh, both these games play one to four players, so both of them have solo modes. Uh, you can certainly play with younger audience here. Uh, Paladins is going to require, you know, older kids or older players as well. But in Dinosaur Roar and Write, uh, you are going to make a dinosaur park by hiring people, making sure your security is high enough so people don't get eaten by dinosaurs, and using DNA, you roll dice to gain DNA, and you're going to use that DNA to make dinosaurs. Uh, so that's Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. So let's get to the first category, which is production. Uh, as far as Paladins goes, one of the coolest things about this game is, you know, this game is a relatively small box, and in that box, you just get so much stuff. It is absolutely ridiculous. Every player has all these different tokens and colors and different meeples. There's a ton of cards, there's coins, there's things to punch out, there's white meeples, there's little houses, there's these skinny center boards. Every player gets these huge player boards in front of them to sort of this is you sort of controlling your, this is like your board where you're controlling your engine and your town. And then you've got cards and raiders that come through. Uh, the fact that all this stuff fits in this box, I mean, you wouldn't think the game is as big as it is. This game, you see this on the shelf, it's like, oh, it's a small, normal size Euro game. And you have more bits than you can count in this game. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, everything's done really well. I've mentioned before that some of the, there's a lot of iconography in the, Pal in the West Kingdom series and, you know, decoding it is, takes some getting used to. It is consistent across all of them, but it's not my favorite sort of graphic design. Now, one of the unique things about Dinosaur Island Roar and, Roar and Write is that each player gets two different sheets to write on. You have sort of like your engine building, like a counting sheet. And then this is where you actually like design your park and make your dinosaurs on this sheet. There are some beautiful DNA dice that look really cool in this game. There's a bag. And then there's, you know, employees. You set up three different employee cards and three different like specialty buildings each game uh, that you work towards. So it gives you some good variability when you're playing. And the game is broken up into phases, very clear phases, just like the sort of bigger version of Dinosaur Island, the main version. Um, and obviously we're looking at different price points here. You can see the boxes may look similar, but this game is a little cheaper, I think. But this game is very cheap for what you get. So there's no question that when it comes to production value, Paladins takes this one home. I mean, I was shocked with how much stuff you got in this box. So we have to give production to Paladins. 
Now, moving on to gameplay mechanics, this is where, despite the seating of these two games, it gets really tricky. So, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write is one of my favorite roll and writes in the genre. It is my favorite of all the Dinosaur Islands, Dinogenics, Build Your Dinosaur Park. This is my absolute favorite game in that theme. Um, and the fact that you get two different sheets and the game is a lot crunchier than sort of your standard roll and write. It's a much meatier game than you sort of expect. Uh, but it's a right amount. It also doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, I really like Dinosaur Island Roar and Write mechanically for those reasons. There's very few stumbling blocks uh, when you're learning to play. The phases help break it up pretty easily. I mean, my, my eight-year-old daughter has been able to play this um, pretty effectively, although last time she played, she wanted to make a dinosaur park without any dinosaurs in it and only like roller coasters. Um, and I think she lost solely because she was sticking with that theme to the end. But it was still pretty close with her focusing on like, what do they call those? Like the attractions and the, the merch and the ride, the ride things instead of building dinosaurs. Now Paladins of the West Kingdom is for a crunchier 90 minute to 120 minute game. I really love it. It has, it takes forever to set up. Like if everyone's setting up their own board, they can help you. But setting up your board and like covering up all the spaces with all the tokens, organizing everything and taking all those bags of stuff out and setting, setting the game up is uh, definitely detracts from it. The fact that the experience is a 90 to 120 minute game makes up for it because you're investing in sort of the length of game. Uh, and for Euro games, I find Paladins of the West Kingdom uh, very intriguing. My favorite mechanism in this game is that you choose your paladin each round by drawing three, three of them, picking one to put on the bottom of your deck, picking one to use, and then picking one to put back on the top of the deck. So it gives you some great planning round around with how they're going to boost your stats so you can, you know, develop your kingdom that you're protecting in different ways. Um, but I really love that, that choice and that control uh, in the game. That's one of the unique things about it. Everything else in the game is all about uh, everyone has workers and then your workers are color coded. So each worker uh, is good at certain things. So like the green worker is good at hunting. The red worker is good at recruiting new cards. The blue worker is your merchant worker and it's going to trade. So you start specializing in engine building in certain workers to build your engine a certain way. And then you have these zones, which are based on two worker combinations. Uh, but I mean, you can sort of see, especially on this side of the board, this is a meteor game. This is a complicated game. If you take the time to invest in it, uh, I think it's one of the better ones, but uh, it's a lot. And you know, I think, I think in this head, this this seating thing, we have sort of this BGG board game geek bias going on, where a lot of people that use board game geek are into crunchier games. So Paladins of the West Kingdom is sort of ranked higher than Dino, you know, Roar and Write, even though Roar and Write sort of crunchier. Um, I think this really depends on the audience you're playing with. I know that Dinosaur Island is way easier to get to the table, even though Paladins is more of that complete game night experience. Dinosaur Island Roar and Write does take about an hour to play, but it's not as, it's not gonna consume your game night like Paladins will. If you're sitting down and playing Paladins, you're committed to, to playing through it uh, and playing for you know 90 to 120, maybe even longer if you've got some slow players. So, these, these are very different games as far as mechanics and weight goes. Um, me personally, I lean towards shorter games because I can get them to the table more. So for me, I, I would give this, if, if you were asking me again, this is my tournament, and if, if it came down to which game I sort of had to put up for sale, I really like Paladins for the category it's in. It, it impressed me, especially since it's not really my type of game. But Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, I've absolutely, 
I've had major issues with Dinosaur Island and Dinosaur World. And this is my favorite of all those sort of Jurassic Park inspired games. Uh, and I like that theme a lot. So for me, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the mechanics to this one. Uh, and to keep it a little interesting, I gave production to Paladin. So we'll give uh, mechanics to Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, I think. Now, as far as theme goes, uh, I really love the artwork in the West Kingdom series. They use the same artist and it's consistent between the different games, architects and paladins. Um, so I really do like the artwork. Again, the iconography isn't my favorite. I wish there was a little bit more text on the game to give you hints about how rules work. So I'd have to look at the rule book and reference the rule book quite as much. It's another ding against it mechanically too. Like every time I play this game, I, I'm referencing the rules at least once or twice. Whereas Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, I can pretty much, once I refresh myself with the rules, play it without referencing the rules uh, and have a smooth playthrough. But th theme-wise, um, while I would say that I like the artwork slightly more in Paladins, so I mean, this one's close. I do like the artwork a lot in Paladins, but it is sort of this generic fantasy setting uh, 900 AD setting whereas uh, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write the theme I absolutely adore and I think the artwork's pretty fun but for me the theme and the mechanics uh, of what you're doing in the game you know collecting DNA using that DNA to make dinosaurs drawing the shape of your park the theme and mechanics are tied a little bit more together for this one as well Whereas Paladins has this 900 AD theme around it, but this is more about the mechanics and less about the theme and mechanics working together. Uh, they're a little disjointed. You could reskin Paladins with another theme uh, using the mechanisms, and I think it would, I, you could come up with a couple things that would definitely work. Whereas Dinosaur Island Roar and Write is leaning into the theme a lot heavier, and again, it's a theme... I literally have bought so many of these games trying to find a Jurassic Park game, and this is the only one I've kept. Dinogenics, out. Dinosaur Island, sold. Dinosaur World, sold. But this one, uh, this one and Draftosaurus are the only ones that I think are sort of decent uh, in, that, in that theme and category. So for those reasons, I'm going to go with Roar and Write for theme. So now we come down to replayability. And... Um, I mentioned before, one of the things I like a lot about Dinosaur Island is you're picking three different employees to set out on these cards with different effects, and you're choosing three different buildings that give you different effects each game. So, you know, that's six cards effectively, and you can see that there's a decent stack of cards. So there's a ton of replayability in managing those cards and special employees and special buildings. Um, and every time I played it, I think that, that you have to sort of look at those and combo with your dinosaurs and sort of find out what's what works best. Paladins of the West Kingdom is a big epic game that does not drastically change with every time you play it. This game is about, it's really deep and it's about playing it over and over again to discover the intricacies of the Euro economy in it, the puzzle and the strategic nature of sort of these heavier Euro games. So um, while that puzzle has never disappointed me, there is less variability in the core box here when it comes to playing it. So, um, you know, even if some of these categories have been pretty close and even if I, even if, if we were to sort of go to a tiebreaker between these games, Roar and Write would come out on top. So for me personally, replayability, I think Roar and Write's a little stronger. There's more variability in game to game in the core box. But even if we sort of took it to our tiebreaker in this series, it would come down to things like setup time, way quicker, way slower. It would come down to uh, 
you know, you know, set up, tear down, like overall opinions. And while this has expansions, you know, just the fact that there is so little player interaction and you're playing this really puzzly solitaire Euro game, which a lot of people out there love, but, and as much as I was sort of impressed with those mechanics, mechanically, that's just not my type of game. So in this type of tournament, as much as I like Paladins, I would much rather play Architects just because of the length of play. It gives me a similar feel, uh, similar vibes, but it plays shorter. Um, and I think it's easier to teach. So if this were going against other games in the series, I would go with Architects over Paladins as well for my personal collection. But we're gonna do an upset here uh, because for me personally, I, I've, I've experienced Paladins, I've enjoyed it, but I'd be okay selling it. Whereas Dinosaur Island Roar and Write is the game, is my Jurassic Park game in my collection. And I bought and sold several other games trying to find the Jurassic Park game that's right for me. So uh, for, for me personally, we're gonna send Dinosaur Island Roar and Write through. Uh, and you can get angry at me in the comments and tell me how wrong I am about Paladins. Uh, but just remember that every game in this <laughs> series of videos are all games that I really love and are part of my collection. I tried to pick, you know, the 32, some 32 of my favorite games in my collection, which is, you know, not, not extensively large, probably, probably around 100 games total. So keep in mind that I still do like this game. It's just in this particular matchup, I gotta go with Dinosaur Island. So thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to this videos. Uh, if you wanna see who ends up the champion of this tournament of my collection. Uh, and as always, let me know what I got wrong and, and right in the comments below. I'm sure lots of you are upset about Paladins losing this one, but again, it's subjective. And for me, uh, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write is, is the winner in this matchup and is the game I'd rather put on the table and play. Uh, in this moment in time at least. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.